Who would have thought a French short story written over 100 years ago would go on to become the biggest TV show of 2023? Good evening, everyone. My name is Nicholas Corsell, and you're watching The Literary Nomad. Today, I'm in Da Nang, Vietnam. Over the last week or so, me and my girlfriend have spent a lot of time um, watching this new show on Netflix, Lupin. In the last month, Lupin has went on to become the most successful and popular Netflix original in over three years. And this has caused a lot of people to wonder, who is Arsene Lupin, what is the source material, and how did this phenomenon come to be? The best way to think about the character of Arsene Lupin is to think of it kind of as like a French equivalent of Sherlock Holmes. The biggest difference is Lupin is committing the crimes and Sherlock Holmes is solving them, but in the culture of each country, uh, France and the United Kingdom, they play a very similar role. And honestly, this has been one of the best short story to film or TV adaptations I've ever seen. The reason for this is that it's incredibly unique in the way that the filmmakers decided to approach the adaptation, right? Instead of trying to just kind of copy it beat for beat, they fully modernized it and kind of twisted the original French tale to be both applicable to the modern world, but still faithful to the original in a way that's really interesting and kind of doesn't upset either party, right? There's going to be groups of people who want something new, they want something culturally relevant, as well as people that are in love with the classics, love the character of Arsene Lupin, and somehow this show found a way to keep both of those groups happy, and I think that that is very unique. And the way they did this was by making Omar C's character not Lupin, but rather a thief that's very inspired by him. They created a situation where when they want to be faithful to the source material, they can have Asan Diop, the main character, um, do exactly what is in the stories. But then when they want to deviate, they can just have him do Asan things instead of doing Lupin things. So they can kind of um, dip in and out of the source material throughout the show in a way that doesn't make you as the viewer upset. And I think honestly that's the strongest point of the whole show overall. It perfectly bridges the gap between modern France and the classical history of the country, right? Um, you're able to kind of get a commentary on the immigration of modern France, a lot of the issues of modern France. Like when you see uh, the scene where Hassan is trying to steal the pearl and the crowd is forming around and you're seeing like this kind of class struggle. And you're seeing these class struggles continue to develop throughout the three seasons in a way that's very interesting and you can apply it to what has been going on in France in the last years. And that theme persists throughout, right? You're seeing a lot of this push and pull between like the bourgeoisie and the proletariat, the common people and the rich, the haves and the haves nots. That's kind of, they're in constant conversation with each other throughout all three seasons of the show. And if we're talking positives with the show, I think the acting of Omar C is absolutely phenomenal and he kind of carries the show whenever um, maybe there's plot holes or because obviously it's a little bit gimmicky and a little bit campy, some of his disguises don't make sense and in reality of course he would get caught right away. Um, but he's such a charismatic actor that kind of demands control over every scene he's in that you overlook it and you don't really mind it that much as a viewer. Earlier today I was reading a piece in The Guardian by Leila Latif um, who argues that this over-the-top kind of corniness actually is a pro of the show and she says that it's a satirical um, intentional move by the director. Saying that Hassan not getting arrested despite his disguise as not being very good a lot of the times is a commentary on how at least in the eyes of the police um, all black men are interchangeable. Um, a direct quote she says black men are considered so interchangeable that simply putting on a cheap wig leaves them, talking about the police, totally bamboozled. Well, I think this is an interesting idea. I don't know if it's 100% accurate. Stories like Lupin and even Sherlock Holmes have always been over the top and unrealistic. That's maybe not the point, but it's certainly a characteristic of them. I mean, you can just look at the cover art of the original Lupin series and you can see this campiness, this over the topness. Though I like her idea and I think it certainly has an interesting layer for discussion, which I think was probably the point of her writing it, um, I don't know how intentional that was, but if it was intentional, I think that we'd have to tip our hats off to the directors of the show because I think that would be a masterclass and make the show even more compelling. Additionally, Paris as a setting works wonders for this film. They don't go over the top with it and shove it in your face that they're in Paris, but you just see these little pieces and moments of extreme beauty that just enhances the overall vibe of the show and makes it a great watch. And in the description below, you'll find a link to a Project Gutenberg compilation of some English translations of the more popular short stories, novels, and novellas about Arsène Lupin, written by Maurice Leblanc. And if you're interested in going deeper and exploring more of the written side of the Arsène Lupin character, I think that's a great place to start out. Think of it kind of like a greatest hits album of some of the best short stories and moments of the character's history as well as the article from The Guardian that I mentioned earlier. As always, if you guys liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps more than you know.